traditional fundamental congregation located in Troutman. Hear them Sunday mornings at 815 here on WSIC. Listen on demand, WSICFM.com. Be a part of the conversation. I listen on the way to work. Have your say. It's more than just opinions. It's facts. This is WSIC News Talk Now. Good morning, Lake Norman. Hope you're having a great Thursday. The sun's shining, but it's a little chilly out there, isn't it? But it's uh, this will pass, and we will be in spring and summer before you know it. Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam here, and we have a very, very special show for you today. And, uh, you know, I just love emphasizing our, our businesses that uh, exist right here in our town. I think you'll be surprised as we continue uh, this particular trend in the in the uh, shows ahead. I think you'll enjoy getting to know some of these folks. And uh, today is one of those special occasions. Uh, you know, as a as a banker and a citizen of this community, and uh, uh, you know, you can't live in Cornelius without having heard about uh, this entity that's been in our town for decades, and that's called the Griffin Brothers Companies. Uh, they have done so much for our our um, economy here. They've done so much for our town, and they are not nearly done. So I have uh, uh, one of the partners in the Griffin Brothers Company, one of the sons, Mike Griffin, with me today. And I've known Mike for, for many years. He sat on my bank boards and uh, been a, a great uh, advisor for me along the way. Uh, particularly in the business world and also in the political world. He definitely keeps up with that. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Woody. It's Pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here. And, uh, you know, you listeners are in a treat today. You're getting a great treat to hear the Griffin Brothers story. So you guys started out a lot of years ago, didn't you? Your dad did? We did. We did. You know, dad grew up here in North Mac off Bettiswood Road in uh, 1961 in February. He started our family business in the tire business. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, you were in the tire business how long? We were. So Dad started in February 61, and we actually sold the business in uh, April of 2016. So a good 55-year run. That's incredible. That yeah. absolutely is. And you guys did such a good job in that business, and customer service was certainly the name of your game. And, uh, I mean, I used you faithfully well, thank uh, you. During, during all those years. I personally shouldn't take too much credit. As a kid, I changed a lot of tires, but really my father and my brother ran that. And my brother, in particular, really took it from a, a solid business of a couple stores to 10 stores from uh, the 26 years he ran it. So he, oh. really, he really did a good job. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you, you guys uh, grew to be pretty big uh, during that time frame. You really did. And uh, we're just so glad you landed landed here. So how long has your family been in Cornelius? I know you haven't been here forever, but a really, really long time, right? No, we've always had a presence in Cornelius. We had a little trailer on Casual K down Jaton as a kid through the 60s and 70s. And then Dad moved back up here permanently in 81. 81, so, wow. Yeah. Marina, wow. Marina Villa, and then uh, he's lived off Nance Road for the last 22 years. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's um, that's you're becoming a foundation of our community. You lived here when you moved here when Cornelius was just a little tiny town <laughs> uh, with nothing going on. So uh, right after Lake Norman um, filled up, actually, it sounds yeah. like. So yeah. so yeah. you definitely go way on back. We've come a long way, way, haven't we? No doubt. Yeah, Dad tells stories as a kid at North Mech High School sneaking up here and having a beer and watching them build the lake. So. Yeah. <laughs> been around a few years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was amazing. I was very small, but I do remember that uh, just faintly. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was it was exciting to see that lake fill up. And uh, you know, did it did it take you did it take longer to develop than you would have projected? Looking back on those times, yeah, that's a great question. I never really thought of it that way. Um, I, I guess I wasn't surprised that it developed. I always thought it was one of those great hidden secrets right you could sneak up here and have a great time on the lake and exactly jump in a car and if you worked in charlotte go 25 minutes south and you're in your your business so not surprised um but when the word got out it, it definitely developed rapidly it, it really did um it, it was a little slower than i would mm. have projected yep. uh, um, my dad was one of the developers with uh 
Duke Energy way back mm. when and uh, bought the property where the lake filled later. And uh, I think his projection was that it would be just like on fire immediately, and it wasn't quite, but it yeah. but it's happening. Yeah, it yeah. certainly has uh, has moved into its own time now, and uh, um, off we go in into the future. So uh, the tire business was one of your businesses, but along the way, I think uh, Griffin Brothers, um, you you dabbled into a number of different uh, types of business along the way. We did. Um, so tell yeah. us about that, Mike. Sure, sure. So the, the brother Griffin Brothers' name came from my uncle and my father, and in 1983, they split the business in two. My uncle kept Griffin Tire, and we kept Griffin Brothers. Uh, super ambitious dad. My dad has always wanted to grow beyond what we were doing. So my brother and I both were first-generation college kids. When my brother came out of college in 85, he got into real estate, uh, residential real estate, and actually mm -hmm. started working up here with uh, – uh, Miss Drag, I can't remember Lake Lake Properties. Lake Properties. Lake Properties. Lake Properties. Yeah, yeah. And Rob Drag's still around. Yeah, yeah. I know Rob and, and that family, good great family. I actually went to high school with Rob's cousin uh, Desiree Drag. Yeah. But, but sure. anyway, long story short, uh, he pursued that, and I got out of school in '87 and came back to work for the family business. I uh, kind of caught an entrepreneur bug when I was in college mm -hmm. and realized that my father created this wonderful foundation. Why not take advantage of what he started? Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was a uh, 15 employees in one tire store and about wow. a million revenue close to downtown Charlotte. Sure. You know, so even though we kind of had a presence in North Mech, we worked closer to Charlotte and, you know, right city, right time, right father. And we leveraged that. My, my father, anytime somebody come into the store, he had to say, what should my son start? Mm -hmm. That was always the, if he respected the customer. Right, right. And we had a customer pretty early on said that, you know, you should get into the communication business. Mm -hmm. Cell phones had just come out, mm -hmm. and we started a cell phone business, and that was my first business. And then got lucky, right place, right city, and really able to grow that over a decade. We became the largest distributor for the, in the nation for Alltel. So we really mm -hmm. were fortunate in that regard. Sold that business, and then, but in parallel, my father never stopped asking, what should we start? Mm -hmm. And the second business we started was in the late 80s, here in Huntersville, it was a waste business. We were managing construction waste. And as you can imagine, construction waste is a good thing when you're building. And as you mentioned, Lake Norman and North Mac in general boomed from the 80s to the 90s. A lot of building going yep. on. Yep. Incredible. So we, so we managed that construction waste from the 80s till now. We mm -hmm. still have that facility. So just fast forward, just the blessings of being in the right time in the right city we grew the tire business from one store to 10 stores. We grew the waste business from one facility to five. We grew our real estate from zero to about a million square feet of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of diversified a little bit. We got in hospitality. We owned a golf course uh, in Northwest Charlotte called Pine Island Country Club. Mm -hmm. um, my brother's done a wonderful job with his wife starting Royal Bliss Brewing Company. And we're, awesome. we're excited. I'm sure they'll come at some point, but they're excited. They're excited to have the opportunity to... Uh, to maybe open another location here in Cornelius. So I'm super excited. Well, we're really that. excited. We've seen some uh, previews of that, and yeah. it's going through our planning process right now. Yeah. Uh, yep. We'll we'll have um, Larry Jr. And, and Ginger on one of these days. Right, right. Um, yeah. So I think outside of that, in 2016, we sold the tire business. We took it to 220 employees and 10 stores and uh, had an opportunity to sell it. Um, frankly, it's one of our probably bad businesses, and we probably should have sold it to the employees. But... Uh, we we did start another division called Zoom Up Investments. We're investing in the next. Yeah, I want to talk yeah. about that. Yep. Uh, you know, we'll do that yep. right after our break. That's uh, uh, right around the corner here. That's that is quite a concept here in our community, yep. and uh, I'm excited to have it here. So, yep. thanks again, Mike. This is Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam, and we'll be right back. with Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam. Coming up on 105.9, 100.7 WSIC. We're starting out with sunshine, but clouds on the increase as we work our way through our Thursday after a cold start, getting a little warmer into the mid-40s for this afternoon. Tonight, the clouds will thicken up. Temperatures drop down to around freezing. The brief chance of a passing shower, maybe a little bit of wintry mix, mainly in the overnight hours. Then the sunshine comes back. It's breezy. Still with highs in the mid-40s for our Friday, but chilly. Another blast of Arctic cold on the way by the weekend. That's your forecast from the WSIC Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Chase Myers. Here is your WSIC community calendar. 
Having performed all over the world, written hit songs, and mentored artists, Rocky Lynn is making another stop here at home, playing at Kane Center for the Arts this Saturday. Listen each weekday morning for your chance to win tickets and meet and greet passes. And come hang out with us prior to the show. WSIC will be in front of Kane Center for the Arts from 6 to 7 p.m. Rocky Lynn this Saturday, kanearts.org. That's C-A-I-N arts.org. Mooresville Parks and Recreation presents the Hitmen of Country, playing at the Charles Max Citizen Center Friday, January 19th. Love country music? The Hitmen of Country have toured and recorded with some of the country's greatest artists, like Keith Urban, Trace Adkins, Travis Tritt, and Jason Aldean. For more information, go to visitmooresville.com. That's visitmooresville.com. Birkdale on Ice is still going on through January 28th. Time to lace up your skates and hit the ice. To make sure you can skate when you want, we recommend you making a reservation. For skate session info, including times and pricing, visit BurkdaleVillage.com. Want to attend the Greater Charlotte Home and Landscape Show? How about the Charlotte Home and Remodeling Show? Throughout the day, you have your chance to win tickets. Listen each day to Good Morning LKN, the Home Ad Show, the News Drive at 5, and the Scoreboard. Each show gives you your chance to win. The Greater Charlotte Home and Garden Show, February 23rd through the 25th. The Charlotte Home and Remodeling Show, January 26th through the 28th. Have an event you'd like to tell people about? Yard sales, estate sales, and everything in between? Visit WSICnews.com and click on Event to submit your event today. Now, more about town with Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam on 105.9, 100.7 WSIC. And we're back. Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam here with a special guest, uh, one of our citizens and one of our businesses right here in Cornelius. It's it's uh, great when those two aspects coincide, and certainly. The Griffin brothers and Mike Griffin and his family are, uh, they actually wrote the book on that. So glad to have uh, Mike Griffin with me today. We were just talking about uh, one of uh, the more unique ventures of the Griffin brothers along the way. You know, he was talking about his dad uh, waiting to start whatever's next in terms of uh, business opportunities. And uh, I didn't know that about his dad. I know his dad quite well, but... Uh, you know, the, the fact is um, that that's the push behind the dream, I think, that uh, that these guys needed. And um, I, I know they, they have a lot of respect for that uh, in relation to their dad. But the one thing that uh, uh, Mike just had mentioned was a an entity called Zoom Up Investments. Now, Zoom Up Investments, that's, that's quite a name. Where did that name come from, Mike? Yeah, Woody. So um, the original name was going to be Bob. And that stood for buying ugly businesses. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and then I think it uh, some young folks talked me into having a little sexier name. They zoom up. So mm-hmm. the, the the concept is finding next generation entrepreneurs that are willing to get their hands dirty. You know, we we kind of made our career changing tires and managing waste, dirty jobs, so mm-hmm. to speak. Sure. And we have a passion for that. And we have a decent knowledge of how to run that type of business. And I've spent since 2016. I've spent a good bit of time finding young men and hopefully young women at some point that are willing to get their hands dirty and sure. have entrepreneur ambitions. And we basically mentor, fund, and partner with those young folks to build their businesses. So fast forward, we've been pretty lucky. So we've got um, nine companies. Um, gosh, you know, those nine companies have over 300 employees, and we're headquartered here in Cornelius. All the companies are headquartered awesome. here. About a third of our employees are in the North Mac market, mm-hmm. and then about two-thirds are across the Carolinas. But uh, – Super, super fortunate. I think as a combined uh, companies, if you put them all together, it's more than a hundred million revenue. So they've really done a tremendous job of growing their businesses, classic trade type businesses, heating and cooling. So we have New Blue Service Group. New Blue has New Blue Air, New Blue Plumbing, and New Blue um, um, Electric. And we also do landscape. We do uh, uh, auto collision business. We mm-hmm. have um, scrap metal business. You know, anything you think that's dirty, we probably have interest in doing. Mm-hmm. And we've got a group of very sharp young men, average age of 30, that are pursuing these dreams. So how does the public get to these people? Is, yeah. is there a central way to do that, or 
or how you know sure. what's the process? Sure. Well, our website, GriffinBrothers.com, okay. uh, details them and tells the story of each one. I um, mean, Griffin Brothers is either spelled out or bro. They both go to the same website. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it's out there. As, as far as um, customers, our, our number one market is North Mac, uh -huh. our, in particular New Blue. Mm -hmm. the, if you see these New Blue trucks with uh, plumbing, air, and heating and cooling, that's our partners, and they're out there working hard. We've got great technicians that we're very proud of, and they're, they're doing great stuff in this market. Well, that's fantastic, and and you know to uh, uh, actually be a consultant, all all the, the businesses you guys have owned, what a value that is to these businesses that um, you know actually are part of this Zoom Up investment piece. Thank so you. now, do you have ownership in any of these groups? We do. So we we basically have ownership in all of them, mm -hmm. and then we have partners obviously have ownership as well, and we're. Really advocating uh, for a model that's similar to a Chick Fil A. You mm -hmm. know, Truett Cathy started a wonderful business in '67, and we're mimicking a lot of what he's did and built the culture he built mm -hmm. around frying chicken. We're just turning wrenches, but uh, there you go. it's the same business plan, and basically, it's passing ownership more to the frontline technicians to do the work. Yeah, if it's not real equity, it's phantom equity, and that they get based on performance. Right, right. So, uh, so how do you feel about the the there's a little bit of a trend now, uh, uh, particularly with younger folks, that maybe the need to go to college mm -hmm. uh, is is not as critical as it has been. I mean, these guys coming out as a uh, plumber and getting the training and all all the trades that you just mentioned, uh, they do pretty well, don't they? <laughs> they do very well. Yeah, they do very well. So even though I'm a first generation college kid, I'm convinced that college is not for everybody. And I'm right. actually convinced we have too many colleges, and there's too much pressure for people that don't need to go to college to go to college. And if they don't have parents paying for it, they're building college debt. Mm -hmm. So so we do go to the three CMS schools up here, Hopewell and Huff and North Mac, and we made our speech that there's alternatives. We're not saying don't go to college. We're saying there's alternatives. And to mm -hmm. your point, we have young men that are, and, and some women, but mainly young men that are 25, 26 years old. They're making more money than college graduates of their same age bracket mm -hmm. actually a good bit more right because if you're if you got good work ethic and personality you're willing to turn a wrench you'll make a six-digit salary pretty right. quick right well that um that's certainly awesome i mean it really is and it's something for uh, the kids of today to think about i mean it really is to uh it, there's a need in society for um that level of investment you own your own company and have the best resources of consultation through you guys that have been through it all. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's pretty exciting to me. And um, I love your, uh, love your new facility that you can uh, give these folks a chance to get going in. And uh, I think you've just expanded it, haven't you? Yeah, thank you, Woody, for mentioning that. So we, our, our headquarters for primarily New Blue and some of our Zuma companies is on Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So 19505 Liverpool. We bought a 6,000 square foot building from a good friend of ours that had his uh, office there, and we've now expanded it. We've doubled the space. We added a 6,500 square foot addition for warehouse to help su supply the growth that we have through these companies. So we're right. super excited to be there. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So now tell me a little bit more about the landfill business. That's mm -hmm. an intriguing business, and yep. um, I've worked with you guys from the banking stand standpoint over the years, and uh, and I know what it is and what it does, but how many of these landfills do you have around yeah, um, the yeah. region? So we, we have five landfills, four that we own, and one that we manage on behalf of a county. Mm -hmm. um, so two of them in South Carolina, three in North Carolina. Uh, one in Huntersville, one in Harrisburg, and one in Lancaster County, just south of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So those three, I, I, if I had to guess, probably manages about 50% of the construction waste in the Charlotte region. Wow. So we, we, we're, we do a significant amount. And as you know, we've been pretty fortunate. Charlotte's grown a good bit. Right. So, uh, and, and how we manage that, we have the most state-of-the-art uh, material recovery facility or recycle center in North Carolina. It's in Huntersville. It's about a $6 million facility. So mm -hmm. all of our waste goes through that recycle center, and we try to extract things that we can reuse, mm -hmm. especially woods, awesome. plastic, metals, et cetera. And then what we can't reuse, we actually landfill on site and, and, and basically manage that through that process. So that's that's really the it's, it's always been quietly the largest part of our business for the last 30 years. It's just right. that no one needs to know about it. It's just a little bit hidden, hidden business. It, it's, it's awesome. And, um, uh, you know, I've, I've always been amazed at your process that you go through in getting these approved in, in these various, um, you know, locations around 
the yep. state, if you will. So yeah, that's a good quite point. a process. It is. It, we have to. We have very close relationships with the town leaders, obviously in Huntersville, as well as Cornelius, and, and even in Davidson. Um, we're. I'm very um, interested in economic development and trying to foster that and trying to keep a better balance in our cities. With you know, we have we have a wonderful place to live and play. We do. We don't. Ironically, ninety percent of our citizens, you and I, are a minority. Ninety percent of us have to leave this region for our jobs mm-hmm. because we're kind of in a high-pay community, low-paying jobs. Right. And and I'm passionate to see how we can recalibrate that to bring more high-paying jobs to our market. Yeah. But I also recognize that eighty percent of our people that work in our town are not living here because they can't afford it. Yeah. So we have. This well, I think that's up to ninety now. By the way. Well, you're right. So it's it, even. It's, new, it's even. UNCC. Did it's a, even worse. <laughs> UNCC did a new study, and I forgot about that. You're right. Yeah. So the the numbers are even more compelling. But that's a weird situation, isn't it? Where you have it really wealthy, is. wealthy residents and you have service-based jobs and they can't afford to live here. Yeah. The wealthy residents can't afford to work here because they're not of high-paying jobs. It, that's amazing. So we have a caller on the yep. line. I see Jim Vogel out there. Jim, I hope you're doing better, buddy. Hey, Mayor. How are you? Hello, Michael. How are you? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Yeah, appreciate you calling in today. Okay. What What's on your mind, sir? Well, uh, you guys, of course made me call in when you talked about the school trades and kids and how we can get them <laughs> to make a lot of money in trades and get them away from other things that they're doing. Yes, sir. Preach on, bro. Have the, uh, <laughs> the Lake Norman Small Business Network has a school trades education fund since 2017. We partnered with Men of Destiny down in Charlotte. Get these kids uh, uh, an opportunity to be outside working and not inside a jail cell. We've been trying to do that for the last year or so, so it's good to see that we've got more more people aligned with what our focus is to get these kids off the street. I mean, skilled trades are a wonderful thing. My dad was a dye maker. My father, my brother is a tool maker. I grew up in Detroit, and as you know, Woody, and uh, I was the first one to go to college in my family. Yes. Because everybody was skilled trades. Right, right. So it's so nice to hear uh, – that the Griffin brothers are doing what they need to do to help these guys. Quite a neat investment in the community, isn't it? I, I knew that would uh, would ring your bell there, Jim. I'm, I'm glad you were listening today. That's awesome. It really is. So what's going yeah, on with you. our, any anything else going on with our small business group? I know you had a meeting yesterday. You got a new location, right? Yeah, we're located now at the H2 Public House, uh, you know, which is right around the corner. Right. Uh, right here in the peninsula and the, of course, I'm still recovering from long COVID, as you know. And, yes. Uh, as a communications guy, to be coughing all the time, it just doesn't doesn't uh, jive together. It's <laughs> not my jam to be coughing all the time. But, uh, you know, just be careful out there. Uh, you know, you know what's going on, so you don't want to get sick. Yeah, that's a that's really, really good advice. And uh, we we hope to uh, get you better because, um, you know, I think, um, I think we've got a rough schedule out there that may be uh, maybe we'll have you in next week. So, so you got something to work toward. Get better, so we can feature <laughs> small you, business you. next week. I'll be doing that at least uh, once a month, and uh, you know, we we hope you'll be able to be part of that. Uh, we'll we'll talk more well, about you. that offline, Jim. That sounds good, Mike. Thank you for all you do for the community and your family. Really appreciate it. Hey, thank, thank you, me. thank you so much, Jim. And uh, yeah, preach on. I agree with you. We got to help these kids find great opportunities. Great, good yeah, deal. Yeah, we need to hook up, and Woody knows how to hook us up. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. We'll we'll do, all three do that one day. So we're yeah. we're down to uh, a few minutes before our break. Uh, appreciate your callers uh, uh, touching base with us. Feel free to give us a buzz at um, one s. Let's see, eight four four studio four eight four four studio four. We'll be right back. Keep it right here. About Town with Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam. We'll return after this short break on 105.9, 100.7, WSIC. We're starting out with sunshine, but clouds on the increase as we work our way through our Thursday after a cold start. Getting a little warmer into the mid-40s for this afternoon. Tonight, the clouds will thicken up. Temperatures drop down to around freezing. The brief chance of a passing shower, maybe a little bit of wintry mix mainly in the overnight hours. Then the sunshine comes back. It's breezy. Still with highs in the mid-40s for our Friday, but chilly. Another blast of Arctic cold on the way by the weekend. That's your forecast from the WSIC Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Chase Myers. 
Get in to Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. Happy New Year. Yes, 2024 is here. We are celebrating Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. The deals could not be hotter, can't be better in the new year. Come see us today, Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. Check out the Silverado, the Colorado. How about a new Traverse? It's the new body style. Come see us. It is going to be a great year. Happy 2024 for Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. King of Price, randymarionstatesville.com. Attention, this is a public notice from the Social Security Disability Helpline. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be eligible for disability benefits from Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right. If you suffer from physical or mental disability, whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. We'll evaluate your situation and deal with Social Security on your behalf. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. Remember, we only get paid if you win your case. There are many reasons and conditions that may make you eligible for disability benefits. Many of them you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call now to get started with your free, no-obligation consultation. 800-556-2974. 800-556-2974. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. As a mom, comforting my family is what I do best. Vicks Vapor Stick provides soothing, non-medicated Vicks Vapors in an easy-to-apply stick. And it dries fast, so there's no mess. I use it to comfort myself (sighs) and my family. (sighs) Thanks, Mom. Vicks Vapor Stick, soothing comfort for the whole family. And when you need more comfort for yourself, try Vicks Vapor Shower for steamy Vicks Vapors. Use as directed. Vapor Stick for use ages 4 and up. Vapor Shower use for adults only. Call now to speak with Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam at 844-STUDIO-4. It's about town on 105.9, 100.7, WSIC. Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam here, and we are back. show is moving right along with our special guest today, Mr. Mike Griffin with the Griffin Brothers Companies. And I'm... Um, Quite a great history in Cornelius that Mike is telling us about. Uh, We've talked about a a vast variety of um, the things that he's had going on and got going on. But one of the real, uh, I I guess, uh, influences that Mike has had on our community is his vast knowledge with economic development. And he's got some pretty profound thoughts and ideas on that. And I tend to agree with about 99% of that, uh, you know, and he, he really has a, a good history with that, uh, has been involved, I think with our EDC since the, the start, one of the major investors there, uh, to keep it going and keeping it, keeping it moving. And, uh, you know, Mike, Tell, tell us a little, talk about economic development, particularly as it relates to, you can expand to North Mecklenburg, but I'm really, really want, wanting our folks to hear your thoughts about Cornelius and what we can do better uh, to make our town greater. Sure, Woody. So first of all, you probably shouldn't agree with me 99% of the time. I'm not sure I agree with myself 99% <laughs> of the time. But no, you and I have a lot of uh, common interest and passions and uh, you know, one, I, I do look at most everything in a business format, and I, and I do look at a town as a business. And this town, Cornelius, has got a significant budget. And and if you look at running it the most efficient, you want to have a little bit better balance where you have a balance of commercial more than we have now. Right. And you you probably know the numbers, but I know it's at least 80% revenue, property taxes coming from residential and only 20% exactly. coming from if, if that. Yeah. Yeah, and we have this, and and you and I have read this study. UNCC's come and refreshed a study about North Mac and Cornelius in particular, where ninety percent of our residents leave this town for the job because they need high, higher paying jobs because it's a higher net worth uh, community. Yes, and ninety percent of our um, people that help service us in this town come from out of town to, to for jobs here. 
So we got this evening and morning rush hour of people leaving and coming, to, and that's kind of weird. And well, let's of, talk about yeah. that a minute because yeah. I just saw some numbers on that, Mike. That uh, the number of folks that work in our town is in and around fifteen to sixteen thousand people. It's mm-hmm. a lot of people, and you take ninety percent of that that's on our highways day after day after day, uh, creating some of the challenges that we have as it relates to transportation. Don't you agree with that? Yeah, and it's very complicated. And it honestly, I've, I've twenty five years now involved with economic development, gone through thousands of hours of training and understanding of what's going on and. It's a hard story to tell, but if you look at our town, probably 60% of our traffic are people going through our town to get somewhere, and that's unfortunate. Exactly. And um, That's where the problem comes right. from. And then we've got people leaving and coming for jobs and so forth. So we've got this weird thing, and the way our government works, as far as the Raleigh, they typically fund economic development. So if you want a new road, if you want a new interchange, you, you announce that you're going to have 1,000 new jobs that are paying over 100000 each, mm-hmm. you'll get everything you want. If you don't have that, it takes 20 years to get something. Right. And we've got this frustration here. I live, work, play here. I see it. And and the road fix is not that easy. It's just not, you know, we, we, we need to have economic development of high-paying jobs, and we're running out of real estate to do that. Exactly. I mean, that, that clock is ticking. It, yeah. it really is. I mean, I think um, one of the last big pieces of development is in and around the Atrium Hospital with uh, – uh, certainly the com- uh, commercial component of that particular development. And yep. I'm excited about that. We don't know the details yet, yep. but um, we, we're going we're gonna to work very hard to get that right. You know, I'm dreaming about a lot of specific things out there, and, uh, you know, if I get to serve long enough, uh, yeah. we're going to get it there. Yeah, and I share your excitement, but I also can share some frustration there. If you look at Novant and Huntersville and now eventually Atrium here, they don't really pay property tax. Right. So we're not getting that money. So we got to hope and pray the rest of those acres get developed in a way to generate exactly. property tax to fix our mix. E- exactly. So um, it's it's a very complicated thing that uh, um, that, and I'm, I don't consider myself that smart, but I do study, and and I feel like after 20 years I've kind of got a better feel for what's going on, and what the needs are, and ironically a lot of the solutions aren't there unless you have economic development, and people are sometimes scared of economic development. They think that's going to cause the problem not fix the problem. Exactly. I, I hear that a lot. It's like, okay, we're getting a hospital here. I mean, who doesn't want a hospital in your community or some something you can get to pretty quickly? Uh, I realize the, the property tax piece of it, but um, that's a component of quality of life as far as I'm concerned, as long as you can balance it with the other part, which yeah. is the commercial development. So there's just a great balance in this. And I, I, what I see happening is that that development will help us get some of the roads that we so desperately need um, in and around Highway 21 and so. uh, possibly an interchange and all that. All that. Um, hopefully, Atrium will have the muscle to help us move that needle. That's what I'm counting on. I really hope so, and they have lobbyists. So even though they're maybe, maybe not the economic driver that I'm talking about as far as like a big job creation as far as in paying property tax, they have lobbyists that will probably bring in the roads that we need to see. So, uh, yeah, they're they're a good advocate. I mean, they're they're a good corporate citizen to have, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're hoping for. So, um, you know, that hospital is going to open pretty quick, uh, i.e., very early twenty five. Yeah. So I look forward to being around for that that ribbon cutting. I think that will be um, certainly uh, present itself to the region and the political entities that are out there. To get a lot of attention, the hospitals yep. always do that. So, I agree. so that's a that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned here. So, um, so what can we do better as far as economic development? Uh, you know, we've got some. You and I have talked quite a bit about some major corridors that we have here in our town, like West Catawba Avenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, what's the right word? Uh, um, kind of ugly stuff on West Catawba remaining there? How can we how can we make sure we make that better and yeah. and and get it as good as it can be? Because we got one shot at this. Yeah, it's so tough, Woody. Uh, you know, it's um God, it's, it's such a complicated issue. I mean you, you and I remember this when Lowe's came to our region. Yes. When Lowe's moved five thousand people here, it started transforming our area. Where it did. some of these run down facilities got replaced with newer facilities and so forth. So we had that run, right? But now that's all kind of stabilized. Mm-hmm. We, we've got some decent companies up here with uh, MSC Supply and Train and, and Lowe's. 
we so desperately need another one or two of those large companies that brings the talent and the W-2s, you know, the salaries that match up to the wealth of our area. Yes. And then that live, work, play, stay will convert West, West Catawba into a wonderful thing. But right now, if somebody builds something new, most likely something else has got to close because mm-hmm. there's an imbalance. Right. And, yeah, I, I share your frustration. Every time I drive down West Catawba, I want to see improved properties. I want to see some of these uh, stockyards of, of boats and stuff turn into facilities. But it, it, you can't just wish that. It, there has to be an economic development tipping point. And Atrium and some of that land around there could help do that. There's probably some other land that needs to be identified. I, I would strongly encourage our town leaders to hire professionals to better educate themselves and the citizens on the power of economic development. Well, exactly. And, you know, we just did that, or we, we're in the process of doing that with our new downtown plan. Mm-hmm. We've needed that for years, absolutely needed that for years. And uh, uh, my former board um, drug their feet. They absolutely drug their feet on it, and they weren't willing to spend money. I think this new board will be more considerate of that, and I think we got a shot at getting it right mm-hmm. uh, because you do have to have professionals stepping in uh, the former board was okay with staff doing it. Well, staff's great. I mean, they're awesome, but they need the consultation with these top-notch people from around the country to to bring all the the uh, ideas that go on throughout, really, the certainly the southeast, but the country as a whole, uh, bring those ideas to home right here in Cornelius, and uh, that's how we're going to be as, as great as we can be here. Uh, but, you know, we've got some neat stuff coming. To, uh, to downtown, but this development plan will take it the rest of the way. We, we desperately need that. It can't happen quick enough. And yes, we need to hear our citizens out, but we need to drive it through those consultants, through this board, and, um, and get that done as quickly as we can. So I know you probably agree with that, but that's not yep. the only area that has the need, right? You're right. Well, I 100% agree with you. I, I do think that uh, what I've learned over the 25 years of economic development, um, you really need hired professionals. You know, and I think I've known every town board member for these 20-plus years, and they're all qualified people and good people. But if we spend our life making our career and success in some, some other thing and you get into the governmental complexities of economic development, you really have to have, have third-party people come in and help us. Right. And that would be one of my things I would advocate for your board is to continue to invest in, in that type of knowledge. We're going to work on that um, for sure, and that's that's certainly where my head is, and um, I'm glad I got a, another uh, little while to too. accomplish that. So glad, hopefully, glad you're here. hopefully that will will come to come to pass. I've been, you know, dabbling in economic development for many years as a banker back up in the Mooresville, South Iredell area, and look at the success they've had up there with their industrial park and bringing headquarters in, and uh, mm-hmm. you know it goes back to uh, a plant an absolute plan and, uh, and, and, and very defined economic development directives. And, um, you know, we got a great guy on our board that just got elected, Robbie um, uh, yeah. Carney. I love Robbie. And uh, Robbie's a great guy and yep. has had a lot of success in this. So I'm, my expectations of Robbie and what he can deliver is pretty high. He knows that. So, and I've worked with Robbie for a number of years in that capacity. So pretty excited about that. So we've got a, we've got a very, um, able listener there. Yeah, I was most excited to see him commit to being on the town board. His experience with economic development in Iredell County and just business experience that he has is a great value for your team. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. This is Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam, and we are about town today with the Griffin Brothers, and we'll be right back. with sunshine but clouds on the increase as we work our way through our Thursday after a cold start getting a little warmer into the mid 40s for this afternoon tonight the clouds will thicken up temperatures drop down to around freezing the brief chance of a passing shower maybe a little bit of wintry mix mainly in the overnight hours then the sunshine comes back it's breezy still with highs in the mid 40s for our Friday but chilly another blast of Arctic cold on the way by the weekend that's your forecast from the WSIC Weather Center I'm meteorologist Chase Myers Here is your WSIC community calendar. 
Having performed all over the world, written hit songs, and mentored artists, Rocky Lynn is making another stop here at home, playing at Kane Center for the Arts this Saturday. Listen each weekday morning for your chance to win tickets and meet and greet passes. And come hang out with us prior to the show. WSIC will be in front of Kane Center for the Arts from 6 to 7 p.m. Rocky Lynn, this Saturday, canearts.org. That's C-A-I-N arts.org. Mooresville Parks and Recreation presents the Hitmen of Country, playing at the Charles Max Citizen Center Friday, January 19th. Love country music? The Hitmen of Country have toured and recorded with some of the country's greatest artists like Keith Urban, Trace Adkins, Travis Tritt, and Jason Aldean. For more information, go to visitmooresville.com. That's visitmooresville.com. Birkdale on Ice is still going on through January 28th. Time to lace up your skates and hit the ice. To make sure you can skate when you want, we recommend you making a reservation. For skate session info, including times and pricing, visit birkdalevillage.com. Want to attend the Greater Charlotte Home and Landscape Show? How about the Charlotte Home and Remodeling Show? Throughout the day, you have your chance to win tickets. Listen each day to Good Morning LKN, the Home Ad Show, the News Drive at 5, and the Scoreboard. Each show gives you your chance to win. The Greater Charlotte Home and Garden Show, February 23rd through the 25th. The Charlotte Home and Remodeling Show, January 26th through the 28th. Have an event you'd like to tell people about? Yard sales, estate sales, and everything in between? Visit WSICnews.com and click on events to submit your event today. Now, more about town with Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam on 105.9, 100.7 WSIC. And we're back. Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam here with Mr. Mike Griffin with the get me with the Griffin Brothers Companies, uh, major entity in our town. We're so glad the Griffins uh, found Cornelius many, many years ago. And you know what? Uh, this group of folks, they put back so much into their community. They're so committed. Uh, we talked about uh, Mike Griffin's service on the Lake Norman uh, EDC board for many, many years, investments there. Uh, you guys were also, I was, I was so proud that you were such a um, fine investor and, and helped us so much with the Kane Center for the Arts. So, um, you know, tell us what you did with that. Uh, you know, it's kind of unique, but it worked. It's something that they needed, and the timing was perfect for that. Well, it was our privilege to get involved. You know, and we're not that artsy of a family. We're a little bit more on the redneck side. You know? <laughs> We talk about North Mac. You know, we, we consider ourselves North Mac folks, right? Back when I was a kid, you had these fancy towns called Huntersville, Cornelius, and Davidson. Exactly. Th those were townies. Those That's were right. Those the artsy people. But no, jokingly, uh, we, we do have a passion to make sure that we have a well-rounded community, and that's a great way of doing it. And we've really enjoyed the Art Center. I've seen some events there, and it's really a wonderful place. Yeah, they're doing doing well. And tell us the part that you actually did help us with based yep. on your, some of your companies, I think. We did. We did. We, we In-kind um, offerings seem to make a lot of sense. So as you, as we all might remember, there was some old uh, blue steel Really ugly, ugly blue steel buildings. Yeah, ugly buildings there. They're not ugly from, in my eye, but ugly for downtown. Um, and we have a demolition division, so we actually demoed all that work. And I think you and I had a little fun on the excavator. We did. Taking a few whacks at those buildings. One of my biggest thrills. I, I <laughs> need to have that picture framed. I really do, because that, that was a good one. But a great experience, but example of the uh, uh, Griffin's investment back into the community there's many many more examples of that that uh you know i probably couldn't even get mike to talk about but uh you know they're they're invested here in in many many ways and everything makes our community a better place and all always affects our quality of life so that's a that's a good thing so so where do you where are you guys going from here i mean you've done so much you've got you're not uh not nearly as old as I am, and um, so we've got some opportunities. I'm I'm sure ahead that you've got in back of your mind. You're you're one of the most creative people I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I I know there's some development opportunities that are yeah. working their way up through the town, other than the the uh, um, Royal Bliss 
brewery that we talked about um, yeah, just a yeah. few minutes ago. What else you got going on? Yeah, you know, um, my family, when I say my family, my father and, and my parents and my brother and myself, we all plan to be here for the rest of our lives. So we have a great passion for Cornelius, and, and, and we have a great passion for the lake. And um, my father and my brother live side by side across from Ransom Creek Park. And, and we have, for several years, tried to figure out how to sustain that and how to even possibly share it. And that's something that we've kind of fine-tuned. And we've come out recently, a few weeks ago, and, and started the process with the town about um, taking my father's house and my brother's house and converting them to private event space so we can have people come to enjoy you know, business meetings and perhaps weddings and so forth. Uh, but we don't want to leave the property, so our hope also is to build three smaller homes adjacent to those homes mm -hmm. to live there for the rest of our lives while also trying to manage the, the property. So um, a, a thousandth of the scale, but if you think about the Cecil family who owns the Biltmore Estates, at some point they had a situation they didn't want to sell the land, but they wanted to figure out how to retain it and, and maybe make it a mm -hmm. positive asset for that, in that case, Asheville. Uh, much smaller scale, but it's the same concept. Try, what can we do to do this? And we're such a unique position because our neighbor is a 43-acre commercial property. It's the Ramsey Creek Park. And yes, it so is. It's very rare to find 12 acres and 1,500 foot of shoreline that's privately owned that's adjacent to a commercial property like that. So we think it's a perfect opportunity to make that a private event space where we can uh, share it with others. And that's one of the things my father was probably the only one on Nets Road that celebrated opening that beach across the street from our property. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was saying this is going to you know, ruin our lifestyle or whatever. But my father grew up with no money, and his parents were factory workers, and mm -hmm. he's a uh, um, just a hardworking uh, hero of mine. But he saw the need to make sure there's access to the lake, mm -hmm. and, and that's you know. So we're the, one of the few that celebrated that, and this is maybe a continuation of that. There should be opportunity for people who don't live on the lake to be able to touch the lake, and they have very few opportunities to do that right now. Yeah, well, I I think it's a great project. I really Thank do, you. and. Uh, I know we've uh, we've talked about some pretty grandiose um, thoughts and ideas for that uh, particular property. Uh, you know, you got a park down there that's uh, not the most beautiful park that you'll ever step foot in, but it does give access to the lake, and uh, you know that that part of it's good. But it could be a lot more, and I think it's time to certainly you know press on the county to make it what it can be. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's you not, know, I, yeah. I don't want to get too political with that, but I'll make it just a 30,000 level statement. Yes. We're the most impacted investor adjacent to that park. Right. And we see that as a um, opportunity long term for Kenius to have a wonderful asset more than it is now. Right. Because right now it's pretty much a forest. It with, is. Uh, with a playground and, and four dilapidated boat slips and some, some a beach. Um, there's something there that can happen at some point. Um, that's above my job grade and above my time and capacity. But I, we as a family will always support town leaders looking at ways to maybe make that a bit, a bit more of an economic development opportunity. Now, without needless to say, that would also include road improvements and so forth. And we look forward to West Catawba Road, road improvements coming soon. Boy, yeah, don't we that. ever. Yeah. And uh, we're really searching for ways to speed that up. Um, you know, the uh, right-of-way acquisition is still going on, and it's a little slower than, than yeah. I'm happy with right now. So trying to get our arms around that and see if we can't uh, move that along a little bit better because it's all related. Um, you know, that's the first step of this road uh, project. Next will be the utilities. Well, that's never fast, yeah. and uh, we've got to get construction started. Um, you know, good news. I do have some good news to share. We do have two of our uh, six major road projects under contract. Uh, the first is the Highway 21 roundabouts uh, right near the ABC store in Cashins. Uh, that is under contract, and you'll see construction, i.e. orange barrels and all the, all the other uh, pieces of that coming about in, in March or April or so, but very soon. Uh, also, the Pot Street Roundabout, which connects to the YMCA and Davidson, the uh, Pot Sloan Beatty project in Davidson, was bid all at one time. So those bids are out, they're back in, and they're being reviewed, and that contract will get signed probably before the end of January. So, you know, two out of six is not bad. Uh, we yeah. are going to be the recipient of some major discretionary money coming out of DOT, 
Um, there was $62 million put out there for that purpose. We're going to get uh, four of our projects. We're getting a chunk of that money brought to Cornelius. We're, we're so ecstatic about that because we've worked hard for it. Many of us have politicked and, yep. you know, beat drums and um, done what we can. So we are there. All the things we've been talking about are coming to pass. So we just got to get West Catawba you know, in the, in the mix here sooner than later. So yeah. that is, that is a very high priority. Yeah. Woody, this is really a compliment to you and your team, Andrew and Wayne and the, the staff at Cornelius. Without economic development, typically roads do not happen. Exactly. They just don't. And, and this town has done a tremendous amount of work with the folks in Raleigh and other folks in, in the, in the federal side, the DOT side to get as much money appropriate here as possible. And it's very hard to do it if you don't bring jobs. And y'all have done a really good job in that. But I think, unfortunately, citizens don't see that. Citizens just see rush hour issues. They do, and, uh, of, with cars that yeah. of people that yeah. don't even live here. I know. And, 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 and you and know, I, we're the victim of yeah. major development in Huntersville and Denver yeah. and Mooresville. And yeah. uh, so we've just got to live with that. I, see, I know that. But, you know, I, you know, again, 25 years of being in economic development, I've had the privilege of knowing the town leaders in all three towns, staff and mm -hmm. board members. And I don't think people realize all the effort that goes into to scrape every penny that we can. And until we have higher paying jobs, it just doesn't follow that easy. So good, exactly. job, good job for y'all to pull the money you do pull. Well, thank you. Thank you. We've, we've got a lot of work to do, and uh, uh, we can't let up. Nope. Uh, okay. One of the major reasons I ran again, uh, and this absolutely has to happen. Uh, we've done some great things. We've got many more great things to do, but nothing greater than getting getting these roads built, because it is tied into economic development. And um, the other thing that I think uh, may deserve a comment or two is our uh, available workforce, i.e., workforce housing in mm -hmm. our community, because we're pretty deficient in that too. Yeah. Uh, my my dream is for that to be worked on as a region here because we, as you know, we don't have much space left. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I think it's a regional problem. Don't you agree with that? It is, and I, I'm I'm more educated now over the last few years than I was before. You know, it's funny because I, I, my family's factory workers. My parents met Lance Crackers, spreading peanut butter and frying potato chips, and they lived in textile factory plants, right? And then they mm -hmm. had the privilege to. Eventually, buy a small house on Bettysville Road, mm -hmm. and we've evolved as a family since. Um, and then, if you look at our town, we have a large percentage of people that are lower paid um, support people for us, and they can't live here. And there, right. there's a desperate need for affordability. In today's time, it, it's going to take a little bit more of a governmental um, process and assistance, and, and, and or and or creativity with developers. It's extremely complicated. I'm glad that the town recognizes it and is starting to put resources to figure that out. Um, there will be some what I call NOAA, naturally occurring affordable housing. You know, sure. If you somebody's under maintain an apartment complex and so forth, it may create a situation that may be seen bad on the outside, but it's sort of good in the context that it gives people an affordable place to live and work in our community. Absolutely. Uh, but there's not enough, not enough NOAA is going to happen, and not enough affordability is on the docket right now to fix our problem. Exactly. I to totally know that. So great program today. We appreciate uh, Mike Griffin, the Griffin Brothers uh, story. It's quite a story to tell. And, uh, you know, it all happens right here in Cornelius. So we're so grateful for all they do for our community. It's going to be a busy weekend in Cornelius. Kane Center has productions tonight with the Drifters. Tomorrow night, another show with the Drifters sold out. And another show with Rocky Lynn on Saturday. Busy downtown. Cornelius Mayor Woody Washam here. Thanks for joining us today. We will talk to you next week. The new 105.9, 100.7 WSIC, Statesville, Mooresville, North Charlotte.